occasionally I have wondered why it sometimes doesn't bother me to need to make a testimonial. And judging from this one, I would say it's because you would actually have to understand the issues already to um, grapple with what I'm going to say, which is, means, you know, one of a rare group of people who understands what really happened. And very likely, because you understand what really happened, you see things my way. Because you can't act as a deaf person on things that you don't know or understand are going on. And it's about the irony of people pretending to not understand when they do. Martha Gellhorn, I suspect, knew more than she said because for one thing, when she wrote to me, it was from P.O. Box 1234, which is a common call for the one, two, three, four, when strike this began a, a, a number in rock and roll. And she killed herself on February 17th, which is 217. It's a symbol of two virgins. But she claimed to not understand me literally. She must have understood the situation because she threw herself in my path. I liken what she did a little bit to Maud's criticism of John Wayne and then melting into his arms at the end of a show because she ended up siding with Franco. Who she resisted and loathed and hated. And the reason people were starting to get ticked off at her in old age was her insistence having seen the liberation of Dachau, that Israel was justified in all that it did. Which I honestly do not believe she would continue to say had she lived to see the genocide in Gaza. However, Ingrid Bergman plays Martha Gellhorn in For Whom the Bell Tolls. Bergman came from UFA Studios with Joseph Goebbels. She was Swedish. She has a, a position in Casablanca, too, um, where the symbol of the underground is a double cross. And they, Humphrey Bogart says of Ingrid in that movie to um, the man she's in the underground with. For your sake, I let her pretend. The fascists, for her sake, allowed Martha Gellhorn to pretend she didn't understand. It's an ironic and perverse turning of the tables. But one of the things that she said was that the British were unconcerned and unaffected by AIDS which does not ring hollow. I think that there's a great deal of truth to that. I think that the people who released states and pretended to be the master planners of the social science involved. It comes down to the Nosferatu who's gang at Jeff and records like Yusu Endo and Penis, Penis and Penis. Penis, Penis and Fred. They were unconcerned and unaffected. So they could pretty much say anything. And the other thing was that she was said that she was too old for it to have any um, effect on her personally. She was too old for it to be a consideration. Um, not that, you know, the Motorola Club was around. I mean, that 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 was not even a consideration for her. And this may have made them willing to allow themselves to pretend. But she said something which was very revealing because Ringo Starr personally took a, a sledgehammer to it, really tore up what her observations. She had a great deal of perspective and she read things carefully and well and understood what I was saying was to convey a great sense of urgency. Why would I convey a great sense of urgency? One, 
I don't want genocide to build momentum so that we have to continue fighting it in Gaza, for God's sakes. Well, here we are. Two, because I believe that information could save lives of people who were concerned and affected. And that's the big difference between the English and Martha Gellhorn, and certainly Nosferatu, who's gang. There were people who were concerned and affected. And all the brainwashing power in Mick Jagger's arsenal with David Bowie went into convincing them to side with the people who did it. And that's not any great mystery when you look at the super story text that emerges from the Texas School Book and the history of fascism in cinema. And you can't evade that Mr. Charm School, Clint Eastwood's gang with Ronald Reagan, were in fact implicated and logically behind it. How did they hide that? By using cinema to m manipulate our media. They told us what Lewis Laugham called a cautionary tale. Be careful not to allow yourself to understand. Be like Martha. Dance with Franco. Oh, Mr. Wayne, fall into his arms, panting to be taken. For your sake, we'll allow you to pretend, is the message from Jeffen and Nosferatu, Mick Jagger, and the Crow Head Gregusta Corona. They will, of course, flock down with all of the venoms that exist in media and the celebrity super state to rage and rant and terrorize that this is not true. And they mean business. It is true. And that's proof that they mean business. And Martha, I suspect, knew that. She was being cagey. I wasn't willing to allow her to pretend. And neither was Ringo Starr. He must have suspected that she knew. 